OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network Um, so, hi everybody and welcome today to our presentation of Engaging Faculty in Pandemic Remote and Learning. My name is Jill Wright and I teach ESL at the Oxnard Adult School. And Vicki is my co-presenter. Vicki, you're muted. Well, already a first mess up and we just barely started. Okay, so as you guys can tell, I'm a novice at presenting. Um, but my name is Vicki Costa, and I am a TOSA teacher on special assignment at Oxnard Adult School. And we are really excited to be presenting today. OTAN has been such a supportive um, program and staff to help us get to this point. So we hope you enjoy this. And first, I really, really want you guys to get started. It's completely off topic, but I want you guys to have a happy <laughs> afternoon Friday. I want you to look around what is in your arms reach, arms length or foot length of something that starts with your first name, your first letter of your first name. So for me, I'm Vicki. The only thing I can find because now I think my first name's ridiculous when I have to find something is the volume button. So as you guys can see. <laughs> so um, if any of you guys can do that and share with us, that would be wonderful. And I'm going to call on Jill first, but I hope some of you guys also look around, see what you can find, um, and share with us. Junk. Junk. <laughs> Jill, junk. Vicky, volume. Anybody else want to share? Medley. I added it. I added into the uh, chat. Renee remote. Oh, Renee remote. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a good one. <laughs> my name is Chuni at the Clovis Adult Education. Well, my name start with a C, and Clovis Adult Education start with a C. And I am drinking Coke with the ice. That's a C. <laughs> That's excellent. How about that? <laughs> Amanda Lee, our host, our tech host from OTAN, she did money. I like that one. <laughs> Anybody else want to share? All right. Well, you guys can put it in the chat. And for some reason, if I miss the chat or Jill misses the chat, Amanda Lee is going to help us with that. Um, and definitely, if you have something you want to share or something you want to ask of what we're doing or not doing, please feel free. We are up for, you know, you interrupting. We will stop. It's, um, we just want to work this out with everybody and enjoy our Friday afternoon. And so now we'll begin. All right. So here we go. So ooh, why is this not? Now I just, there we go. So our objective is today, we're going to tell you what we went through. Um, actually, this is a quote from Brene Brown, but I found this on the Oxnard Adult School webpage way back in the beginning of last March. I thought it was quite apropos of our topic. Yeah, our administrative assistant is really amazing and she's mm -hmm. really good at keeping up with our social media to the best that she can because she wears multiple hats. So she's always posting on there. And Vicki is going to tell you a little bit about our students. So um, Oxnard Adult School, our student population, um, we have a lot of migrant workers and um, field workers because we are known for strawberries, the strawberry festival. Um, so a vast majority of our Spanish, our students are Spanish speaking and Spanish um, is sometimes their second language because then they speak also Mixteco and other languages. So sometimes they come with us with very little skills, but 60% of our students um, are of the Hispanic culture and um, a little bit more than that. And then we have about 20% of the Asian and then the breakdown is a bunch of other different um, cultures, whether 
they're Caucasian or European, something from that, those categories. Um, we do have 60% of our student population are in pre-lit to level three. And many of these students don't have any education, like I was saying, from you know their home country. And so we have about 250 plus different um, variants of the languages. So it does make it very difficult. Sometimes we have to involve three or four different translators just to communicate with our students. Um, most of our students are, or a big population of our students are field workers. Um, sorry about, it's my first time presenting over this without, with having a script or a PowerPoint. Usually I just wing it. So I apologize. Um, we have a lot of non-documented workers. I mean, that come in and these students are not and they're very hesitant about sharing personal information. And that includes their name, their birth date, um, any additional information, their social security number is another difficult thing. Um, our students live in multi-generational homes. And at this time, we have a lot of movement with our students in and out of classes and differing levels of student persistence. Right now, currently we have 18 ESL classes from pre-lit to level six. Um, we also have um, adult secondary education. We have the high school equivalency, high school diploma, and the adult basic education. We also have the CTE program, and that includes mostly medical is our primary pathway. So that gives you an idea of what Oxnard Adult School looks like. So a little bit, and I think Jill's going to take over. To, or so since we have a small group, we're not going to do breakout rooms, but no. we would like you to, um, I'm going to have oh. to stop sharing to get the uh, link to the Padlet. We want to hear about what your pre-pandemic class or school looked like. And I'm going to share the Padlet link. So what she means by that is, what were you guys doing before we knew we were going to hit um, this pandemic, before we knew that we were told we're not coming back to school? And then when we left that day, what did, what did your program look like? When you walked away, maybe not knowing you weren't coming back or maybe knowing you were gonna take a week off, how did that look? Um, and then we'd like for, if you wanna go to the Padlet, cause we'd like to share it with everybody at the end. And we would like for some of those of you who are willing to share it, you know, to all of us as a group. I can share. Go Thank for you. it. So uh, Clovis Adult Education and I am our uh, nurse instructor, nursing instructor. We do have a, a nurse assistant and uh, the vocational nurse program available. And I've been teaching since 2014 when I joined the adult education and they were Scantron, paper and pencil. That was 2014. And I started teaching fundamental of nursing and I converted to everything online. And uh, I started creating the uh, website for students to look at the handouts and, and uh, schedule everything. So. I actually created it by myself and the runs it and then find out a couple of years later after I joined the OTAN and I found out the adult education have access to Moodle, which is adultedcourses.com. I learned that that was very, very convenient. So I learned all the skills just by myself. I, I did not have any uh, mentor. So I already adopted it and using it before pandemic opened. And then but no other teachers willing to learn and they think it's too, too much troublesome. But I created my own class, about a dozen of them. And I was using for the clinical and the fundamental nursing. Any courses that I was teaching, I converted everything into the Moodle. And then if I don't teach that and I, when I have an opportunity to give other teachers, I show them this is all my uh, uh, reference 
it's a, it's a, uh, stored in the Moodle. You don't have to go anywhere. I don't have to give you the key to access to cabinet to get the uh, test and all that things. So I started to kind of like, we have a dozen of us uh, instructors in the campus, but I did a maybe about two, three teachers I converted for them to use the uh, uh, Moodle. When pandemic just happened and they were not gonna come back and actually a couple of teachers ran away. They, they think that they just have to retire. They're not gonna teach and they were not responding any phone call. But that weekend, I went on and YouTube and got the idea of how I can deliver uh, a, a lecture and I adopted a Zoom over the weekend. Mm -hmm. we, we gotta come up something. I had no clue using Zoom, but I attended as a guest a few times a Zoom, but that's all I could think of it. But some other teacher introduced me that they, they can use a disco. I don't know whether you heard about it, but people who play game and they adopted disco. And so they're willing to use a disco. Oh, Discord, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I let them use it, whatever, and then and then uh, uh, we we roll, continue roll out and the lecture, whatever we have it in the computer already. And it turned out, we never stopped the program. We let the uh, three cohorts to graduate. Through just, just the, it's an 18 months program and uh, we continue push them and, and <laughs> use the Zoom and the Moodle and that's all we did. And then Google. And I also learned some of the Google Doc. And so I, you know, I uh, used the Google to have them to upload, uh, convert the, their assignment into Google Doc because that was the only freebies they students can have it so they can upload it, Google Doc and share. So that's a Google, Zoom, Moodle. Excellent. And that, that's how we survived through. All right, so so you didn't have a lot of tech proficiency in your school. Nobody so, has it, and I'm very improvisational. And but I use right. everything and then learn from uh, YouTube. All right, everything. all right. So I see somebody's on the Padlet and saying that um, they also had primarily Spanish speaking, mostly female and um, five ESL levels, about 700 students and significant attrition during the pandemic. Um, she you know, says our older social student, our older adult students in ESL are really there for social connection and a lot of them dropped. And I see that in my class actually, many said they'll return when they are back in person. Yeah, anybody else? All right. Well, I Anybody encourage want you to share out what their school, you know, without putting in it in the mm -hmm. Padlet, you can speak out of yeah. your program. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, All thank right. you for sharing your program. I definitely want to visit Clovis. Um, mm -hmm. it's a plan of mine. I keep looking at it. So you're going to get a call from us soon and we're going to come up there and visit. <laughs> thank you. Sure. So like, um, is it Chen He shared? We also had low teacher tech proficiency, and those teachers had not much interest in becoming more tech proficient. Most of our teachers, maybe most teachers, are closet perfectionists. Um, you may or may not wish to agree with that. I certainly am. Maybe not closet perfectionist. <laughs> anyway, we don't want to fail in front of our students, right? And we certainly don't wanna look or feel stupid, just like our students. So pre-pandemic, there were very few teachers using online tools or accessing digital learning resources and very few people who could help others learn how to use these resources. OTAN, of course, but you know, people like right here, right now in person, not so many. Textbooks were king and ruled most classes. Now, we were using Burlington English, and we've been using Burlington English since its rollout for OAS in 2016. There was the additional, there was the initial normal and anticipated resistance to Burlington English 
that new tech, even though in class tech help was available to teachers, um, that lasted about a year. And then after that, there was always someone available to help troubleshoot in the class if necessary, although in-class tech buddies were no longer available. Some teachers even resisted using Burlington, even with all this help. Um, they Some printed out the worksheets for students and gave them out like a paper packet. Uh, Low-level students, one or two didn't use Burlington at all. And then there were low-level students and their teachers, they just used very little tech on a regular basis. There was no teacher accountability regarding usage of tech. Teachers used their strengths and their experience to teach, and they were not hugely open or hugely flexible in moving to new platforms. And then there was the transition from Outlook to G Suite. That was in about 2017, 2018. Our district began transitioning to Google and to G Suite. The district created self-paced online training um, on a different platform called Aludo for all of our teachers. And initially, our Adult school teachers were not included in those who could access this program. Some couldn't even access their new emails. Some teachers worked with Aludo and learned a lot of new stuff. Most didn't. So life in school moved along as normal, even though we had begun hearing about this strange new disease that was discovered in China. I think most of us didn't think much of it, even when it was detected in the US. Um, didn't really touch us here in Oxnard initially. And then last year in March, some of us flew up to Sacramento to attend the 2020 mm -hmm. TDLS. And we were all close together and no one wore masks, although we were a little bit nervous. So we went from this and then that fateful day, March 13th. Those who wanted, wanted were given Chromebooks by the school. We were all sent home thinking we had one week off and we would return and carry on as we had been. How wrong we all were. And those, and let, let me clarify who those were, were only teachers for the adult schools. Mm -hmm. um, for the other schools, the comprehensive high schools, all the students, a majority of the students already had one-to-one -one devices, um, except for a handful, and they were already making arrangements to do that. But adult ed, we were left out of that whole um, dynamic of getting one-to-one -one devices for our students. It was not important, but our principal is the principal of another, um, of a high school. So she had extra Chromebooks, and she said, any of our teachers can use and um, sign out for a Chromebook. So that was helpful. And that's what we started doing. All right. Um, so what, and again, we're not gonna do breakout rooms. There's just a few of us. So we all have a chance to speak, but um, think about the questions. What was it like when your school shut down and how long were you closed? Um, because for us, and what was, you, what were your responsibilities, if any, at the time of the closure? So at our school, our superintendent told us on, I believe it was that Friday, the 13th, that we will be closed for one week. So I, of course we all go home and I'm thinking, well, if I need anything, I'll go in, but we didn't have to do anything. We're just taking a week off. Okay, so we all planned a week off then we realized this is going on. So we got another notice. We're gonna take another two weeks off after that. And so we, did, we weren't prepared and it was just a shutdown. We put signs up on our um, gates and a few people were there not letting anybody in, but just putting signs up in you know, multiple languages all around. So that's how it initially looked like for us. And, um, you know, what was the responsibilities? Well, of everybody, well, for me, as one of the, because it's just my principal, and then it was myself as next steps, um, just take the week off. And if you can, maybe send an email to your students, maybe contact your students. So that was the only 
direction that we were going. So if some of you can share, that'd be great. Let's see, anybody have anything in chat? I'm gonna share mine since nobody's speaking up. I'm sorry. Thank you. No, we <laughs> want you to share. <laughs> okay, so remember when we went up to Sacramento for that weekend, the week before we closed, and actually I borrowed the school laptop to take it with me up that conference, the OTAN conference, and I never returned that laptop to school because, well, they closed it. <laughs> That's what happened. So, well, good thing. I was thinking God must have had a good plan because I had a computer. I'm the only person to have a school computer. Went up, came back, we closed, and then nobody else around the campus. I took a computer and I worked on it with the school computer because I was access to all the school, you know, email and everything. And we did the same thing. Oh, it's gonna be one week up and we ended up whole entire week, but I did have uh, my daughter-in-law was having a baby uh, that 13 uh, 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 weekend, March 13. And so I took my computer with me and went down and my, my son is a computer developer. So here I shared with him, hey, I, I, you know, he was the one actually helped me to put all that online things because I, he's a kind of computer problem a troubleshooter. So everything I turn around instead of my IT guys and I asked him consulted along the way while I was teaching. And it turns out really great because that he was the one suggested, oh, you could use a Zoom, you could use all that. So I just started myself and he was available. I was visiting his actually his house while uh, waiting for the baby to come and here I got all coordinated and ready to roll out you know uh, every single class we can do this we can do online we can teach because you're all expert in a subject area all you need to do is just just to sit in front of a computer and making sure you you go back in class the school and pick up the laptop school laptop because they have all this screen thing you don't have to purchase anything so that's what we did we we started giving those uh, you know the the laptop that goes to computer lab and then take it back and they charging sitting there they just convert it to teachers and they all the teachers get to have their computer started a lecturing following week so Pretty quick change. <laughs> yeah, you sound, it sounds like we were all in the same place together because at first it was like, we're not getting any direction, um, you know, at the adult school level. And I had teachers that were calling their students because they had no tech skills at all. In fact, they didn't even have a smartphone. They had a flip phone. So they called each one of their students each night that they were supposed to have class. And then by the time they got done and had conversations, it was midnight. So they would call me at midnight to tell me, okay, this is what happened with this one. And I'm like 6 a.m. to midnight, but I didn't know which direction to go into. And so then that's where Jill and I were talking and a couple of us who had some skills and we were working with our principal and we were trying to figure out the next directions to go. And um, Seem, I, I hope I'm saying your name correctly, Seema in the chat says that they also had one or two teachers who started with Zoom and encouraged others. And the teachers supported each other. And um, that's what we've heard from a lot of people, mm -hmm. that the teachers were supporting each other. So, and just to let you know, we also had one teacher, uh, she was just didn't want anything to do with tech. She is an amazing teacher and now she's on board. But she did not respond to emails, did not answer phone calls. She ran away from it all. And she's like, I just, I turned on the computer and it kicked me off. So I decided I was all done for the semester. So that freaked yeah. her out, but she finally got on board. We spent one-on-one -on -one time with her and now she's, um, you know, right in line with all of us and right on the same page with us all. 
Well, we, we had a one teacher and he's actually 73, but he still teach. And he sent me an email, long email that he finally decided to retire. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think a lot of schools are experiencing that sort of a teacher shift right now. So you remember we had the picture of the teacher writing on the whiteboard. So we went from that to this. And then well, the spring. Then the spring came. So at that point, once we realized we may not come back till after spring break, you know, what were we going to do? Um, how did we prepare at our school site for emergency remote teaching and learning? And um, so we want you guys to discuss what you guys did. And, you know, I know Chen He, you, per, you know, laid it out there. And did you feel ready to go remote? Um, Lisa's saying, excuse me, Vicki, sorry to interrupt. I didn't mean to cut you off there. <laughs> Lisa's saying that in her district, they had some classes that were strictly online, and that sounds really fortunate to me. However, our nursing assistant classes were canceled until we received a waiver from the state. All of our classes were transitioned online. We had to be creative without classes with lab components. Oh, nice. So we mm -hmm. did not actually close or cancel any of our classes. However, our medical classes, we have a CNA class, we have um, pharmacy tech, and we have medical assisting and back office. And we were able to keep those. Thank goodness are, they're somewhat tech savvy and they would give additional work, you know, virtually remotely to the students also while having them in class, just as extra study skills. Um, and we got approval from our superintendent to, if you have three or four students in proper PPE, following the CDC guidelines, you can come in after a few weeks. So we made up the hours a little bit towards, you know, we postponed it and pushed it off. And so we did not cancel any of our classes and we're thankful for that part of it um, because the teachers teaching those programs were very flexible and willing to make up the hours and be creative, like you said, and certain skills you have to um, do on hand. Yeah, we were supposed to completely close our campus, um, but our principal was a little flexible and was very convincing to our superintendent. So we were back open right after spring break last right. year. Oh. And now um, Seema is writing again that they were using Burlington in class and some Google Tombs tools Ooh. so the students had some skills however many of them did not have a laptop uh-huh so we used some info that west contra costa adult school had shared to adapt lessons with tools on cell phones like whatsapp zoom app on the cell phone they did paper packets for some lower level esl students i've heard a lot of schools did paper packets mm -hmm. so anyway so here we are now yes so, and our spring, after one week off, we heard we would not be returning to school. We returned only online by the end of like two weeks later. So that was around March 23rd. And like Vicki said, during that hiatus, the teachers were supposed to make contact with their students. And the goal was to keep in touch as everybody was uncertain what would happen. Everybody was wondering what going forward would look like. Everybody was a little or a lot scared, uncertain, feeling inadequate to the task of online pandemic teaching. At this point, our goal was low intensity teaching and learning, just showing up, seeing everybody's faces and having some conversation was satisfying and enough. In the beginning, we were missing the connection that we had lost with in-person teaching. Um, in terms of, teach, of tech for teaching remotely, there was not a lot of guidance, like Vicki mentioned, on how we were supposed to be doing this. Many teachers at our school took advantage of the training sessions that OTAN offered, which was amazing. And um, in the fall of 2018, while working through our district's self-paced online learning game, that's the Aludo that I mentioned before, 
um, that the district made available when we transitioned from Outlook to Google. I had created a Google Classroom for, OAS, for Oxnard Adult School OAS teachers. And I called it Google Training. And I had already invited everybody, but a lot of people hadn't joined. And so once we all went home, I started putting a lot of stuff on there posting frequently and a lot of teachers joined and um, paid attention. So there was increasing communication. Teachers were encouraged to participate in the OTAN trainings. They were encouraged to use the Google Training Classroom. Our district started offering trainings and we were initially included, but teachers were not encouraged to take part in the beginning. Many teachers were not aware of these offerings and most of the sessions were not on topics relative, or excuse me, relevant to adult ed. OAS teachers also got together in smaller groups to learn and practice together. Now, I learned about Zoom from OTAN and I created a free educator account and some other teachers at our school were using Google Meet. Again, no directive on how we were expected to communicate with our students. It was like, whatever works, do it. And a lot of us were doing many, many different things. Um, then we had spring break, which seemed really strange. And a lot of teachers taught right through. Some teachers who had good contact with their students, like I said, taught through, others took the break, and um, of course we remained remote. Our attrition was extremely high, about 50%. Um, so some teachers transitioned well, made good contact, got them connected, carried on. And the challenges of getting everybody connected to Zoom or Meet were very, very real, as we are still discovering, like on a daily basis. Some teachers did not transition well, like Vicki mentioned, and they just vanished. So somewhere around April, I think, the, our office began phoning all of the students just to connect with them, see what was going on. Were they attending? Were they not attending? What were their plans? Teachers were using everything to connect with students. Some teachers became very adept at managing multiple accounts. We had district email, which is Google for the school communication and then personal Google for student communication. And um, our students at this point did not have district Google accounts. So they were unable to join our district Google classrooms. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the pub and the club in a little bit. This threw several wrenches into everything. We did no testing at this point, no causes, no GED, no HSE, HSD, no EL civics, not in person, not remote. And initially all EL civics units had been canceled. Then they were reinstated. Later in the semester, EL civics testing was conducted via Zoom or socially distanced in the parking lot. In-person causes testing resumed in June by appointment only, masks and other PPE required and socially distanced. And the semester ended. Let me add something to that, mm. Jill. Yeah. So, you know, Jill said no casas at that time. And now it's true. We were fortunate to have a wonderful testing and accountability coordinator who is very on top of the CASAS testing. So as soon as they had their hours in, she called them in and tested them. So when the pandemic hit and we went through the school closures, we were pretty good with our numbers. Um, so the reports were ran and it was only time for her to do makeups for the CASAS test. So that was one benefit we did have even if we could not get any more students tested. Um, really quick, I would like to introduce one of our teachers from our school, Kim Cavanaugh. She is our high school, our ASE teacher. She does both high school diploma and high school equivalency students. Um, she has joined our room. She's also one of our high school teachers at the comprehensive campuses as well. There she is, Kim. 
Would you like to add anything else of how the spring semester went and how we just went through the immediate shutdown all of a sudden and we didn't have much warning? Um, all of us, we just knew it was pandemic and we're off. <laughs> Well, one thing I thought was really great, and there's a few, like Jill and a few of us were at the TDLs conference last year. I think it was pretty much the last, like, in-person conference that really happened anywhere. Um, so at that conference, we kind of knew something was going to be happening very soon. So we started, like, learning everything we could. I was, like, listening to, like, Burlington, trying to get different things we were going to be able to use when we did go, um, you know, off like out of in-person and online. Um, so we, I just started taking so many notes so we could do that transition pretty well. And then also with the CASAS, um, our CASAS testing, especially with the HSC and HSD room, when, when our students had that like 40 hours, we would test them. So that was really great that we were constantly always testing them. So when we did move into that, we didn't lose a whole bunch um, with that because we did make sure that we were always doing the testing. So I don't know if that helped you though. Yeah, no, that's great, Kim. Thank you for sharing. Is there anything else you wanted to add in? Um, no, I just, for one thing that we did notice, and I'm sure you're bringing this Ooh. up, is oh, um, you're really breaking well, up. Kim. We've been noting for the, at least with the agent program. Sorry, I'll be quiet. <laughs> This, okay, is, so this Kim, is Zoom in action. <laughs> yeah, this is where technology sometimes fails us. Um, so, she, you know, she's been on Zoom all day teaching her classes at the high school level. And maybe if the reception comes in better, she can get in and speak. Um, Jill, right. did you want to? No, I, I'm, I'm just, our tree man is outside. Oh. Um, yeah, anyway, so we went from, to this now we're tired and at the end of the semester everybody took a deep breath and so we'd like to offer you the opportunity to also have a little relaxation break i'll set my timer for two minutes we're also available to take questions so if you've got any at this point um now's a good time to ask stretch run to the bathroom, grab a cup of coffee, iced tea or Coke. It's still a little bit early for that after five o'clock beverage. So Anybody have anything exciting happening this weekend? Jill's gonna go hiking tomorrow. I'm going whale watching. Whale watching? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. I got a group on. <laughs> Yay. My family's going. <laughs> I'm gonna look at the Channel Islands from afar. Beautiful. It's supposed to be a beautiful day. The weather has just improved throughout the whole week, you know, where it's going to be a gorgeous weekend. So everybody better enjoy it. Do their walking, their hiking, their whale watching this weekend. Because next week, I think it's supposed to be raining and cold. Um, and just, we're not done yet. This is just a break. But remember when <laughs> you guys leave to go out and take a few moments to not only fill out our evaluation, but all the other sessions you went to throughout the last three days. Um, I realized I forgot to do one from yesterday. So I was able to do it earlier this morning. Um, there's some fantastic speakers and presenters. So please make sure you fill those out. Um, and remember, we have that 2.30 to 3.30 session, and I know mm. she will go over everything before we leave, but that's it. All right, that's my timer. All right. Which I use all the time with students, by the way. They laugh. Okay, so here we are back at our, there we are. So now we have summer. Um, now, before we got to the summer, though, 
right before, and we had to have them go on relax and relaxation break was you heard me saying that I'd get phone calls at midnight, phone calls at 6 a.m. That is not an exaggeration. My earliest phone call was at 6, 10 a.m. by our lovely Dan. He's the amazing teacher. And he would call about 1045 at night and we'd be on the phone an hour, two hours. And so our days were 18 hour days. And I'm sure all of you preparing for it, um, your days extended out too. So at the end, we just told everybody, don't even talk on the phone, don't text, just step away from your computers. You have to have some downtime because you know you get tech tech fatigue is, and our principal would say, you're, uh, you know, a couple of times I'd cry. Oh my gosh, am I doing this correct? She's like, okay, Vicki, tech fatigue has hit you. Mm -hmm. Step away from the computer. So, you know, we have to remind ourselves of that. All right. So um, did any of you have a summer session last year? I did. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, we, we had a summer session at our school. All right, maybe some of you will respond in the chat. Yeah. Um, Talk about ours and I'll watch the chat then. Thank you. So we decided after much deliberation and calculation of pay points missed, we decided to have a short session in the summer of 2020. And really it was a pilot program we were going to have classes in ESL only, 30 hours over four weeks, and the curriculum would be one EL Civics co-op. We chose health. Teachers were chosen, um, assuming they, they wanted to teach administration, handpicked different teachers, one teacher per level who um, was fairly comfortable with tech, who had had good results and decent attendance during the spring. And uh, like I said, it was a pilot program to see if we could do remote testing and how that would go. And it worked. It worked well. Uh, we advertised summer classes online only so students knew what they were signing up for. Causes testing resumed. We were doing that face to face by appointment only. Again, safety protocols in place. In place, I keep losing my cursor here. And we discovered we could do it. Or and maybe we Sina, should say we could do it with the mask. And Sina, you did um, a similar session in June, and one class per level. Did that seem to go well? And um, did you have, you know? good attendance from the students? Yeah, and just to um, kind of go off what you said and what Jill said, we did one per level. We just, you know, tried to stretch it out. And same with the ASC program. So we had high school diploma teachers and high school equivalency teachers available also there were four teachers and Kim was one of them that was representing that department all right all right so we discovered we can do it even with masks but it was tired it took more time and then the fall came and um, we'd like to hear how did your school implement what you had learned from the spring to move forward into the fall and I think we're going to dispense with the Padlet. Just either share in the chat or break in now. And during, were, did you guys feel more prepared for the fall semester to start? Um, and were you guys ready to come back? And did you have a plan or did you walk in the same way as you walked out. Jill and Vicki, I haven't, I'm, my name is Renee. I haven't said much because I, I am not at a school site. 
However, um, we did a lot of um, surveys with OTAN and Cape TAP um, in the late summer, early fall, and most, most agencies indicated that they did feel ready to go back. Um, I would say probably in the 70 to 90% range felt, felt like they had the, um, the, you know, the means and, and at least a plan in place to be able to go back successfully. Thank you for jumping in and saying that. Sure. Um, anybody else want to share anything? Okay, well, if, if you change your mind, decide you want to, please jump in. So once we started, <laughs> once I was gonna, we, oh, go ahead, Kim. Okay, I was going to say something. I know that um, originally Jill had mentioned that our school district did a pretty good job for the K, the K through 12 or not the K through 12, the high school section of making sure that there was like, there's technology and everything. And sometimes the adult school teachers didn't quite like know that they were able to do it. But um, I know that they, every summer our district does a really good um, technology program. And I didn't know about it until Jill told me. So that was one thing that like, that I really learned a lot, like about Padlet and different things that I could use with my, even with my, um, high school students and with my adult school students. Um, so that was a really thing that helped me feel prepared for the coming up. Thanks, Kim. And yeah, and that's add, one thing that we didn't, that we didn't really make a point of noting in here, but the it, communication really increased. There was a lot more communication and it went a whole lot better. Sorry, Vicki, go ahead. And just to add to that is our district's really supportive of us and they do work with us. Mm -hmm. So to fairly say that, you know, we didn't have access to the district stuff. It was just as much, we never really had to communicate with the district because we mm -hmm. were all on our own little island and they were on their island. And then all of a sudden, now that we're in this situation that none of us ever expected to be in, we didn't know how to handle it. We were yeah. just um, separate. And so you know, the pandemic has done so many awful things, so many horrific things, but it's also done a couple of fantastic things. It's brought us together to work as a district. So now we work, we have a supportive superintendent, district management. It's really wonderful. And we are part of their district, but also it's pushed us to the next level because you know, technology was not our thing. It was not any of our things. We were moving along without it because that's the way we always did it. And so this really, Jill and I and a few others, Kim, we always wanted to bring technology in, but we were shaking it up and it wasn't, um, you know, really accepted. But now that, that the pandemic changed. pushed us, yeah, it really did. So there were a couple of positives out of this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so when the fall rolled around, uh, there were more changes, of course, but also a lot more intentionality. So we all knew in advance that classes would be remote and students also knew in advance that classes were going to be remote. And that was a really positive thing for everybody because we knew what the baseline was going to be. It also precipitated some teacher attrition as some of you have mentioned. Administrate it. So we switched from Outlook to Google and now administration mandated use of Google Classroom. And this was fine, except that we didn't initially have um, district Google emails for students. We had district Google emails for teachers. So now we're talking about about the club, like Melinda likes to say, and the pub. So we were trying to do the interface with district Google and public Google, and the interface was extremely bumpy and difficult. So what ended up happening was our teachers created Google Classrooms in their club accounts and then needed to create a parallel Google universe in their pub account. This was difficult for a lot of people to get their minds around. So in addition, oh, and we were no more Google, no more Zoom, unfortunately, 
but we could use Google Meet. So again, we've got the same kind of interface difficulty going on with the district Google Meets and the public Google Meets, and it was stressful, very stressful. Um, during the fall, district emails for students finally rolled out. So yay, we were very excited about that. We were actually, we were thrilled about that. We've been wanting that for like three years. But district accounts rolled out mid-semester and it was very bumpy. And my class was the first class, we piloted the transition. So I was able finally to get all of my students enrolled or signed into their district email, find the waffle, sign into my new old district Google Classroom in the club. And we made that transition. Um, bumpy, difficult, but we did it. Uh, teachers had less difficulty communicating with their students. That was great. And many students enrolled for classes. Many students were still rolling in, enrolling for classes in person. When they did this as part of the enrollment process, they took the causes test. They were assigned a teacher. They were provided with the teacher's email as well as instructions how to sign into Google Meet to Burlington English to Rosetta Stone. And so that mini orientation was really helpful. It reduced stress for the teachers and reduced barriers for students. And here we are. Most students were returning students in spring. They had had experience using Google Meet, Burlington, Rosetta Stone. However, spring semester brought continued bumpy rollout of student district emails and parallel difficulties joining Google Classroom and meet classes and the interface difficulty still continued. Teachers encountered difficulty managing multiple Google and Chrome accounts. Ah, and one thing we learned is that the Chrome account supersedes the Google account. So if you are signed into a public Chrome account, doesn't matter if you are signed into your district Google account, the Chrome it, the Chrome supersedes. So it dictates the parameters of what can and cannot be accessed. So using Google Meet in lieu of Zoom has also caused some bumps. So we've had a student's child join class in error. We've had a student walk down the hallway while on the cell phone in class. And then the family member came out of the bathroom clad only in a towel. We also have had incidents when a student thought they had left class and proceeded to go ahead and change clothes. So the difficulty with um, muting cameras in Meet, that doesn't exist. We can't mute cameras in Meet, but you can in Zoom. We learned that Google Meet links can break and they can be reset, but not while a Meet is in session. So the tech problems that we're dealing with have shifted from big how to, like, how do I do Zoom? How do I do Google Meet? How do I sign into my district account? To smaller and more detailed questions like, how do I create an assignment in Google Classroom so that each of my students has a copy? How can I use a whiteboard in Meet? How do I get breakout rooms in Google Meet and how do I use them? There's the ongoing issue of teacher accountability and that big related question of how do I continue to connect myself with administration? We have answers for some of these. All right, and now, Moving forward, how so, about, go ahead, Vicki. How is your school planning to move forward? Um, knowing that the restrictions in California are starting to, um, you know, everything's starting to open up slowly. Our schools are allowed to, on a voluntary basis, at least our district, we're allowed to return following guidelines. Um, how is your school planning to move forward now or in the future, even next school year? And what will that look like for you? I would like for some of you to share or just even moving forward because some of us don't know what it's going to look like for the 21, 22 school year, but how's it going to look forward from today till June? 
And if anybody wants to share, please jump in or um, we do have someone, uh, Deborah, my class sessions in summer 2020 at El Monte Rosemead Adult School. Um, a majority of the teachers had the summer project 2020 with pay, uh, always they like the pay, to be trained for hybrid classes and use Moodle as their learning platform starting fall 2020 for ESL, ASC, and CTE. Excellent. Nice. Um, so for us to move forward, we just got notification um, this week that March 15th, we can return back to school till June 10th is our graduation day. We can return back to school on a voluntary basis, voluntary for teachers, and staff, and students. Um, we are having another meeting early next week with the teachers to discuss that, to see who wants to return. And our student ratio will be 14, 14 to one. Um, so we'll see how many teachers we're supposed to get. They had a survey and completed it today. Let's see how many teachers want to come back. I don't think the number is very high. Um, and that's been the decision right now of how we are going to move forward till June. So if anybody would like to share, we'd like to hear how your district and your school is taking the next step. Sina, our adult school will stay online for the remainder of the school year, regardless of the K through 12 decision. Our students said they want to stay online this year. Excellent. I think a lot of our students, the ones that have finally gotten the hang of it and have the devices, have everything, they really want to as well. I think blended instructions will continue. Deborah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, we agree with that as well. Vicki, I think there's one more in the chat. Yes. Mr. C, um, how do you guys deal with the fact that budget cut shortage while teachers being left alone with new accountabilities, technology, and transitions? Emotionally, it is discouraging knowing that while teachers are being asked to carry more responsibilities and the response that we get from the admin is the cut from your paycheck. Well, I have to tell you, um, our district, we are very, very fortunate, um, extremely fortunate. We have a great union. Um, so we have not had any cuts. Our principal has been, our administrative a school site and district site have been, we cannot be more thankful to them. They have been very supportive. They have not mm -hmm. cut our hours. Um, they have provided us with some paid training and some non-paid training. So it's hard for me to answer that question because all of us have had the opportunity to continue with our pay and to earn extra pay. Now, I do want to tell you, we do have some teachers that work harder than others, but I find that that's even when we're on site as well. Um, so, but I found that certain teachers have actually seem to do a lot better and they're more productive working remote. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an interesting thing. I find it's very exciting to see that when that happens. Jill or Kim, did you have anything else to add to that? Um, yeah, there's one more comment in the chat. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. So we are, Vicki and I are part of the third cohort for the DLAC training. And we highly recommend if you ever consider to join this, it's the Digital Leadership Academy. And it's so far, it's been an awesome experience. As part of the DLAC program, we are, well, you go in with a project idea. And our project idea is to write a curriculum that will be begin an online orientation an orientation to online learning curriculum that's going to begin with signing in and learning vocabulary geared towards the total newbie, hopefully aligned with either 
or both of the EL Civics co-ops, the civic objecti objectives and alternative assessment plans that deal with digital literacy. They identify strategies and resources to effectively use the internet safely, effectively use online tools to learn, communicate, and collaborate with others. We chose this as our project because this lack was such a glaring need in our school community. Also, tech is not a trend, it's here to stay. And somebody commented that blended learning is going to continue. And our school, Oxnard Adult School, has made the decision to continue online learning even after we are able to return to in-person instruction. And everybody should, should know how to do, at the very least, these things on tech. And um, we have had a tremendous amount of administration support, and that's really, really encouraging. So, um, and also the reason for us to fortunately be able to move forward with blended learning or remote learning or face to face to have a variety of um, different ways to present and to teach is because we have the data to show that we are doing really well. Um, we have students that are progressing at the ESL levels that are actually moving up and that they will continue moving up. Um, but also in our ASC program, they have been able to, they're graduating, they're passing um, all their classes. A lot of courses are being passed as well as we have probably um, per the percentage, um, proportion size, probably more graduates so far this year. Now, we do see a downfall in our high school equivalency program. They, the students do better being on campus and doing the practice test, practice work to move forward. But we definitely um, saw a huge improvement in all the other areas. Now our CTE programs, we have some of them, they're hybrid because as you know, some of them have to be skills and they have to be taught in person. So we've broken them up and four students come in at a time or three students in at a time. So we've had to pay them extra to rotate the students through, but we've had students and we know that we've been successful because they have passed a state board, like the pharmacy exam and passed a state board. We just found out last week, a couple more students. So it is working for our program. Um, we have the data to prove it that we are able to move forward, but we definitely need to look at each and individual program and then also look at each individual teacher to see which ones want to continue, which ones feel mm -hmm. comfortable and confident to move forward. Okay. So now, and I want to add a little bit to the DLAC. Oops. If you guys have not participated or don't want to because your plates are full, rethink that because my plate was full. I said, absolutely, I will not join it. Um, and then we had a couple shift changes. So I wanted to support Jill because I knew how important it was to her, but I came in with kind of a negative attitude. I don't have time for this. I can't do it. Um, this was the best decision I've made. It's the best thing ever. Uh, we have, Susan has been so supportive of us. She's our mentor, but everybody from OTAN has helped us in mm -hmm. some form. And I don't like presenting. I can present to our school because to me, that's not presenting. It's just telling everybody how we're doing things and getting feedback and asking them, what do they need from me? But to do this, I have difficulties. So I'm learning new things, but also I'm learning how we as a school site and as a team, what do we need to do? Because we need systems in place because we lacked systems prior to the pandemic. And so when we had to move forward with remote teaching, it was, how do we do this? And um, it was stressful because I felt like I, was the one that should tell everybody and have an easy answer. 
and I didn't have one. I was like, just do your best, do your best. Well, after a while, do your best. When teachers are working, you know, 18 hours, they don't want to hear my mouth saying, do your best. They want me to have solutions. And so that's the one thing this has helped us Mm -hmm. come up with a plan. And our plan is not set in stone and we're going to keep changing it. And it's going to continue to grow and develop as we learn what's right and what's wrong, what's not working, what's failing, what is working, what's really successful. So those are the things that, um, you know, I really, really want you guys to know. And DLAC, I'm going to continue with whatever I'm able to continue with because I grown so much and I have learned so much and I am and was well I'm not an administrator anymore but I was an assistant principal at the high school level nine through k I mean nine through k sorry nine through 12 for years and years at the continuation schools so this I'm really learning so much that I normally wouldn't have learned from any other program so definitely take your take the opportunity and do this program. It's a really great program. Mm -hmm. And so these are, okay, I put select this link, but I'm going to put the link to the PDF in the chat. These are our emails. If anybody of you, if anybody would like to get in touch with us, I'm going to stop sharing and find that PDF and upload that in the chat. Um, anybody else have any questions, comments? Or would you guys like, anybody want to share their program? Yeah. We'd like to hear what your program's doing or not doing or wish to do. Well, while okay, she's so looking while up I'm for looking the from slide <laughs> to share... What I really want you guys to do, I want you to put it in the chat box if you don't want to use your microphone or you don't have the accessibility to do so, is I was going to, Uh I want, oh, did you find it? Okay, yeah, I found it. It's in the chat. Thank you, Renee. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you, Renee. So. Hi guys, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. It is Seema though, by the way, Jill, you you got that right. I just wanted to share, um, we were able to get our ECE, um, Early Childhood Education CTE pathway off the ground and it was a late start in October in partnership with uh, one of our ESL teachers co-teaching with um, the professor from the college. And they did afternoon sessions, Tuesday, Thursday, fully online. It's been completely online. And they used Canvas for the first time, which our school doesn't use. So there was a learning curve for the teacher. She had to do training on Canvas and for the students who, um, you know, they're, they're familiar with Google, but Canvas is a little bit different. So that was a little stumble. But um, the fact that they've completed one three unit course in the fall and they're on the second, it's a four course sequence on the second course. And the feedback we're getting is the professor, our teacher and the students all love the online option. And so it's something that we would have never tried pre pandemic, but now that they've had that opportunity to do this in this way, um, it might be the way that we continue on with this um, with this pathway, the CTE class. So just wanted to share that, that that's kind of like a silver lining that we didn't anticipate prior Thank to Thank you this. so much. How long have you been doing that program, the um, child? This was our program. first year. <laughs> was it? Yeah. We just, it, it was designed over a spring of 2020 and then some summer uh, meetings that we had. And it really, I mean, kudos to the teachers, the professor from the university and our teacher to really take this on. And I mean, our teacher is, she teaches day, evening, and then she's teaching this afternoon session. So she's one of those go-getter teachers who's just on board to try new things, which is really amazing. Um, So it was our inaugural pilot year and we started it in a pandemic. So um, yeah, it was was great. You guys, that's outstanding because that's a difficult program to start with all the insurance and 
you know, liability stuff and then doing it during a pandemic. Yeah, and that was the one thing, like not, the students aren't able to get the hours on site. Um, mm -hmm. So that's the one thing that's kind of been put on hold and we're hoping in the summer session, we can build in those hours. But um, the fact that we got students interested, I think, started with 24, whittled down to about 18 students, and then 16 actually passed that first class um, in the fall. Wow. Um, and then I also just wanted to say, Vicki, you did great on your first presentation. I know uh, you were a little nervous at the beginning, but you knocked it out of the park. So good job. To, <laughs> Thank to, you. To, to, to and I'm not nervous to, I was telling my staff, I'm not nervous with them because I know them and they're my friends. I tell them what you guys, all of a sudden I thought I would be okay. And then it's like, oh no because you guys are all great, all the other presenters, and thank you, though, for the kind words. 